with you this morning. My name is Mark Delkey. I'll be helping out along with Jerry Staling. Again, thanks to him to uh, allow us to have uh, communion today. Today, um, the sermon's going to focus on the second reading, which will be from James. And just a few, few words about James. I believe, and I can stand corrected here, but I believe there's three different James that are referred to in the New Testament. Um, this is the James that is the brother of Jesus, um, not the James of Peter, John, and James that we often often hear reference, but uh, the writer of the epistle of James was the actual uh, a brother of Jesus. And um, early in Jesus' ministry, as I understand it, James was not uh, necessarily on board with uh, Jesus' ministry, but, but later um, did did become more of a more active and actually I think was the leader of the church in uh, Jerusalem and I think he was uh, Jerry might be able to correct me here I believe he was stoned or thrown from the temple uh, roof or something is it is that how he died I believe uh, so you know he had uh, quite a life uh, Martin Luther was not a real big fan of James the book of James um, because of what we're going to actually talk about today uh, in the message about uh, good works, um, doing works, and as you may remember from catechism or, or from uh, confirmation classes, you know, we, we as Lutherans certainly follow the, the doctrine of, of our, our salvation being tied directly to, to faith and, and not anything that we can do. Um, but taken into context, as I, I hope I can get across today, um, James was not really saying that you earn your way into heaven. But there was, Luther had a little bit of an issue with that. As, as you know, uh, Luther was kind of fighting the Roman Catholic faith about, you know, earning your way to heaven and, and that sort of thing. So uh, I think uh, Luther referred to it as the uh, epistle of straw. So I'm not really sure what, what that meant. But anyway, a um, couple of announcements. Um, Sunday, September 12th, will be the uh, Sunday School Rally Day, and that's where um, kids, uh, adults, anyone else that's returning to school or has returned to school, you can bring backpacks and, and get them blessed, as well as probably a, a couple other activities, I believe, that, that day, maybe between services or after. Um, also mentioned that today is a continuation of a stewardship program that I think is um, really done our church well and that is uh, we're having another drive through uh, community free meal. Uh, Tim Benson and I will be burning the brats and, uh, and uh, hot dogs and uh, certainly feel, feel free to come and, and, and take part in that and uh, I think it's been a really good outreach for our church. It's been a very positive thing so um, you know, I will mention, I don't know if Tim will care if I mention this, he's having a little eye issue in one eye, and I had some eye surgery last week, and I'm having a little uh, eye problem myself, but between the two of us, we have two good eyes, so <laughs> we're hoping that, uh, you, know, it, you know, the broad will be done on one side, and the other side might be a little rare, but anyway, come and, come and take part. Um, with that, uh, are there any other announcements? I know we have some, some special uh, prayer considerations that will come later today, but anything, anything else? I see my grandson's here today. I can barely see that, but I do see that. Be good, Finn. Hi, buddy. Okay. <laughs> if you hear something today, uh, don't, don't be alarmed. Uh, okay, so now we uh, turn our hearts and minds to worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways may differ from the ways of the we live. Be tuned to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. 
Beloved God, beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the, mir the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, our strength, without you we are weak and wayward creatures. Protect us from all dangers that attack us from the outside, and cleanse us from all evil that arises from within ourselves, that we may be preserved through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our gathering song is, My God, How Wonderful Thou Art. First reading. So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God with which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as these, this entire law that I am setting before you today. But take care and watch yourselves closely, so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen, nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. The word of the Lord. 
Psalm 15, some scholars say, is kind of a summary of the Ten Commandments. The psalmist sings this question, who can dwell in God's holy place? Well, it's those who speak the truth, those who do what's right, those who are kind and honest, those who love this world and work for peace. That's kind of a, a, a summary, and it's worth saying and worth singing, I think. This song is called Close to Your Heart. I want to teach you goes like this. Listen. We want to be close to your heart. We want to be light in the dark. Oh God of compassion, show us how. We want to be close to your heart. We want to be light in the dark. Oh God of compassion, lead us now close to your heart. Try that with me. from above, coming down from the Father of lights, 
with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your soul. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, be not hearers who forget, but doers who act. They will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, the religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Word of the God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able. Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Now, when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand, there is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. This was going to be a real short sermon. Kathy saw the panic in my face back there. I was running around. I discovered I didn't have my, my message here. <laughs> I thought I brought it. Made a copy for, for Maynard. <laughs> so, yeah, if you saw me running around back there, I, I found it. I always look in the copier. There's a story uh, about a young minister who, on his first Sunday, preached a really good sermon. People were we're very excited about this new guy. Uh, the church council and the call committee felt very good about um, making the right decision by choosing this pastor. The next Sunday came along and the congregation was very excited to, to hear him preach again. So he stepped into the pulpit 
And he preached the very same message as he had the first Sunday. And the people were a bit confused, but gave him grace, thinking that, well, you know, he's new, and uh, perhaps it's just an oversight. However, on the third and fourth Sunday, when the young preacher preached the same sermon, they got a little concerned and a little frustrated. So the council asked to meet with the pastor, and they confronted him and kind of demanded to know why he had preached the same message every Sunday. The young pastor looked at them and said, because you haven't put my first sermon into practice yet. So they had been hearers, but not really doers of the word. In the verses read by Kathy just a few minutes ago, James uses these powerful words for how we need to live our faith. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. James is saying, if we don't live out our faith, that that faith does not exist. In other words, are we simply living our faith, but just merely giving it lip service? James also says that if we only hear the word of God, without taking any action, we deceive ourselves and that faith without works is dead. Now wait, as I mentioned earlier, weren't we taught, as Lutherans anyway, that we're saved only by faith in Jesus Christ, not by anything that we can really do. We can't possibly earn our way into heaven. After all, if we read Paul's doctrine on, on justification by faith, he says, quote, By grace are you saved through faith. And this is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. And in Ephesians he wrote, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. That's pretty clear. So is James then, what we, what we read earlier, contradicting Paul and Martin Luther and Jesus himself, we have these apparent, very contradictory statements. One by Paul, one by Jesus. For by grace you've been saved by faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. That's Paul. Jesus says, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Quite a contradiction. Yes, we're saved by faith. But faith doesn't come by itself. It doesn't come alone. Good works comes along with faith. Work, the works are, and actions are kind of like byproducts of our faith. Faith, if, just to remind ourselves, is really kind of about two things. God's love and God's promise. His love is the giving of his only son, Jesus, who died for our sins. And his promise, then, is the eternal life. Now, in return for these wonderful gifts, it's our faith that should respond by showing our love and appreciation by what we do and how we conduct our lives. If we just stop and think about it, Jesus died, died for us so that we can live. All he's asking in return is for us to love our neighbor, to care for the poor, and be a good example to others so that they may find Christ. That really seems like a small price to pay, doesn't it? For someone who has given up their life for us.
James is not suggesting that our works leads to salvation. Rather, his reference about the doers versus the hearers is really aimed at Christians who profess a faith but live lives that contradict that faith. You know, we may read the Bible every day, our church attendance is spectacular, we attend Bible studies, we read books at home on how to be a good Christian, but if we don't put anything into practice, all of that learning, all of that listening, all that studying is for naught. James says, this is how we are deceived. You know, how often do we hear a good sermon? Yeah, like the one today. <laughs> but the moment Sunday is over, we forget about it. We don't carry it home. Time and again, Jesus condemned those who thought they were saved just because they believed the right things or went through the right religious rituals. The gospel reading today. Basically, he was saying that. Jesus makes it clear that the way to inherit eternal life is through loving God and loving our neighbor. And these are actions, aren't they? Another way to look at acts of faith is like doing exercises. You know, we exercise by doing God's work in some way. You know, if we want our legs to be in shape, we need to walk, we need to run, we need to lift weights, do something that will exercise those muscles or they're going to atrophy and they're going to get weak. Now, by the same token, let's use faith in that way. If we don't take action in our faith, no matter what comes out of our mouths, the number of Bible studies we do or the number of church services we attend, our faith will weaken and atrophy if we don't exercise that faith by doing something. Let's say some, someone can um, cite all the instances in the Bible where Jesus tells us about serving the poor, uh, the oppressed, taking care of the marginalized people in society. This person they know their Bible. They can point out where Jesus talked about that. But if that same person turns their backs on refugees, on immigrants, or they neglect the hungry and poor in their own community, that person is really deceiving themselves. And their faith is not in them. When we say we believe one thing, but don't act on it, it's like we really don't believe it at all then. I'm not sure that there's anything worse for Christianity than hypocrisy. In fact, the word hypocrite is used 18 times in the New Testament. And it was the sin that Jesus pointed out really more than any other. And again, in today's gospel reading in Mark, that's what he was talking about. Hypocrisy really undermines everything that we want to witness to as Christians. After all, why would others want to come to Christ or come to this church when we talk about things such as love and forgiveness, but our actions really kind of fail to show our love or forgiveness? However, when our words and our actions become one, when we become doers, others take notice. Others see how serious we are about what we believe. It leaves them with a positive impression of what being a Christian is really like. Showing kindness, befriending, and comforting those in need, these things speak volumes about who we are as Christians. I think about the, the, the free meals, the stewardship program that this church has sponsored. 
And how many needy people or unchurched people maybe have come up and got a nice meal and drove away thinking, now that's Christianity in action. St. Francis, who quite frankly, I don't really know who St. Francis was, but I found this and thought it was good. St. Francis put it best when he said, preach at all times, if necessary, use words. If you're still not sure about all of this, let's listen to what uh, the words uh, from Jesus specifically. Bear with me. Jesus said, Everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house. And it fell, and it was a great fall. I want to leave you with this. We are not saved by good works. But maybe we are saved for doing good works. Good works should come naturally because of our appreciation for God's gift of salvation, which comes to us only, only because he gave his son Jesus Christ for us. My hope is that after today's message, you will take some time to ask yourself, how am I showing my faith, my love, and my appreciation to God? Amen. Please stand as you are able, as we pray for the whole church, the people of God, those in need, and all of God's creation. We pray for the church that is a safe haven for all who seek your presence. Fill it with pastors, deacons, and leaders who echo your expansive and generous welcome. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. We pray for the whole of creation, that plants and animals have the habitat and resources to thrive and flourish. Inspire us to protect threatened habitats and ensure a sustainable future for generations to come. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for individuals in positions of authority. Raise up wise and discerning leaders in federal, state, and local governments and guide them to seek the benefit of every person. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all who are in need, especially Pam Getz, Louis Boltz, and Jimmy Moyline. Also, all of those affected by the hurricane in Louisiana. Support and encourage those who are unemployed, underemployed, or experiencing poverty. Bring food, shelter, clothes, and stability for daily life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. We give thanks for the faithful departed who showed us how to honor God with our heart. Inspire us by their example and renew our faith, trusting that we will be united with them in glory. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We keep in our prayers the families and loved ones of the servicemen who lost their lives in Kabul, Afghanistan, as well as all the Afghan people displaced and affected by the fighting. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We also pray for all the children, teachers, and staff returning to school this week. May you be with them as they begin another year. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts, known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offering prayer, Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in the meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom as you have taught us to pray. Our Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table is prepared. I would invite you to take the communion packet that you have and take out the cup and the bread.
Take in me the body of Christ broken for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ in his most precious blood may he strengthen and preserve each and every one of you unto everlasting life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Blessing of God provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us. Be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks.